Celtic Way and Celtic Football Club, Scottish football and Scottish sport. My goodness, when you think of some of the Glaswegian footballers and football managers, Sir Alex Ferguson came from Glasgow, didn't he? Tommy Doherty, David Moyes, Kenny Dalgleish. Oh, really, the list of wonderful, wonderful managers and players from Scotland in the sport of football. Well, four semi-finals completed and all semi-finals so far won in two straight games. Next up, we've got women's singles and a chance for Nozomi Okuhara, the Olympic bronze medalist from Rio last year. She is up against Saina Nawal, who was the Olympic bronze medalist in London 2012, but a chance for Nozomi Okuhara to make history by becoming the first player from Japan in a World Championship Women's Singles Final. Two Indian players in the semi-final stage, so three different nations. We've got the reigning World Junior Champion in the top half of the draw, who will play against the Olympic silver medalist, Pusala Venkata Sindhu. And as you can see, Nozomi Okuhara beat Carolina Marin, the Olympic champion and two-time world champion. Nozomi Okuhara. She's become the third player from her country to medal at World Championships. Sina Newell was a silver medalist in Jakarta at the last World Championships. So India, theoretically a possibility of two players in the women's singles final. And for Nozomi Okuhara, well, there's only been that women's doubles pair in the first ever World Championships back in 1977, who've contested a World Championship final. Their chance in the back. men's doubles has Three. gone after defeat by the Indonesians earlier today. Black. The chance in the first side. of the women's doubles has gone. They have a chance this evening in the second of the women's doubles. The question in my mind, perhaps, is how much that quarter-final took out of this young lady, Nozomi Okuhara. Uh, born in uh, Nagano, host city for the Winter Olympics in 1998. It's gone down three places in the world ranking this week because the Olympic points came off the world ranking. So she's gone down to number 12. She has been as high as three, a total of 12 weeks at number three in the world. Won the Australian Super Series earlier this year, but of course hit the headlines when she won the All England title last year on her 21st birthday. So there, her route through to this semi-final uh, tough match against Rachel Hondorich of Canada in the second round, and then that quarter-final against the two-time defending champion Carolina Marin, an hour and 33 minutes. So she's played left-handers in the last two rounds, has Nozomi Okuhara. Her opponent, Saina Newell, is the number 12 seed. She's number 16 in the world ranking, but she's a former world number one. 14 weeks as world number one last year. In fact, it was 2015. I've just given you duff information. But Saina Newell, of course, the Olympic bronze medalist in London 2012, had that terrific quarter-final against number 16 seed, Scotland's very own Kirsty Gilmore. Kirsty Gilmore making history as the first ever player from her country, Scotland, the hosts now to reach a singles quarter-final at World Championships. And the first British player in the women's singles for 10 years since Tracy Hallam. So, as far as the head-to-heads are concerned, this is the eighth meeting between the two players. 
and Saina Newell has won six of the last seven. In fact, she's won the last two. The last time they met was in the first round of the All England this year, when, of course, Okuhara was the defending champion. Lawrence Besta of South Africa is our on for this. Eddie Rofianto of Indonesia, the service judge. So an overwhelming advantage on the head-to-heads for Saina Newa. But an hour and 33 minutes on court yesterday for Okuhara. I wonder what effect that'll have for today. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Saina Neval, India. And on my left, Nozomu Okuhara, Japan. Saina Neval to serve. Love all. Play. So the customary bow from Nozomi Okuhara to all corners of the court, to all the court officials. Well taken off the top of the tape by Simon Ewa. One love. In Jakarta two years ago, became the first player from her country ever to contest a World Championship final. There have been four bronze medalists prior to that, one in men's singles, two in women's singles and one in women's doubles, but one first ever oh. player from India to contest a World Championship final. And it's quite remarkable to think Seven, that seven, after the Olympic Games, Sina Nawal having to undergo one. knee surgery, as was the case for Kirsty Gilmore. Of course, the two quarter-finalists yesterday evening are both having surgery, knee surgery, after the Olympics and both in quarter-finals and produced them a stunning match. Yeah, fantastic uh, feeling for, for Sina to be back two, um, after four. that. Um, knee surgery this is no doubt one of the tournaments that she's targeted wanted to be in good shape here Landed in. Well, oh, what pace of rally. No wonder Vimal Kumar applauds his player. That was Three, perfect. Two. Is she having a bandage on her right thigh there? Yeah, she has. I noticed she had that last night yeah. when she was playing against Kirsty Gilmore. And the only loss came at the uh, Dubai World Super Series Finals in 2015 where Okuhara was outstanding. Come on! Four, two. 
since the first time these two players played against each other was at the Malaysian Open. And I was sitting behind the court when there was a dreadful injury to Okuhara. Oh, yeah. Knee injury, and she had to undergo surgery. So I don't think we can count, actually, one of those results, as it were. It's still overwhelming advantage in their previous meetings to sign a naval. Yeah, that's well played. One of the things that um, Sina has going for her here is her ability to put pressure on her opponents uh, shot after shot. Definitely the advantage in terms of uh, speed of movement with uh, Okuhara, but it doesn't matter that much if you can put so much pressure on your opponent that you can leave out a couple of uh, corners. Of course, we know that tactically and mentally, Sana Nadal is extremely Two. strong. Yeah, the obvious disappointment after that error from it, it, it. Okuhara. Start, Steen. I wondered how much that Aaron's 33 minutes on court yesterday against Carolina Marin might have taken out of Okuhara. Yeah, that, that was a grueling match. There were there yeah. were some long rallies. And the legs are feeling a little heavy today. It will make a big difference to Okuhara's game because she's so fast and relies so heavily on her speed of movement. If that drops a fraction, it will have a big impact. Service over. Three, eight. And does this good old talking to herself? from uh, San and Nival, trying to keep uh, Okuhara away from um, the net area. She's actually pointed um, to the sideline, so yeah. they will then ask her coach, was it going wide? Five, nine. So this one here, was it going wide? Yes, it was, definitely. Uh, 
Oh, it's not a perfect, perfect clear from Simon Awal. As long as she has the um, stamina to uh, keep Okuhara under pressure on the backcourt, it's going to be difficult for um, the Japanese player to uh, get back in the game. But the question is, because Saina also played a three-game match yesterday, yesterday against uh, Kirsty Gilmore, will she be able to maintain that kind of uh, energy throughout the match? And she's got Six. great technical skills as well, Okuhara. So if she gets too much time on the back court, she's easily capable of outmaneuvering her opponents, even though she naturally can't get that much of an angle on her smashes. Placement and angle rather than power. Well, it was awfully difficult to hear what the coaches were saying because our master of ceremonies was making an announcement to the fans here. Did you catch anything of Vimal Kuma? No, not at all. He was also diving down, hiding behind the kit box there. <laughs> as uh, Saina was uh, tying yeah, the shoelaces, um, I, I think I interpreted some right. of the um, gestures in the Japanese camp that um, uh, Okuhara is going to play more downwards and try and attack a bit more. Um, but it's not so easy if Saina keeps producing great clears. That should be one of the cases, yes. Saw the match yesterday against uh, Marin and uh, Okuhara made some great tactical changes uh, at crunch time. 14 all in the third game. It's a good rally, isn't it? She's got excellent shot for this time. And there's another example. And just remember, she's playing with the drift. That's fantastic shot quality. 12, 6. Amazing. Maybe it was a little short. It could have landed plumb on the line. <laughs> as far as I could see. Thirteen, six. Nozomi, Nozomi. Okuara, Okuara. Okuara. Mm. No walkabout out of the court. Delaying the game. Thirteen six. Play. Come on! Oh, 
it's very rare you see Okuhara going for a winner on the return of serve. She's had to because whenever she gets into these clearing rallies, Saina has the upper hand and and if she attacks um, a little under pressure, it's no match for Saina's defense. good character after that miss on the previous rally attack Seven. the opportunity Fifteen. to play the winner from the front of the court this time she made no mistake always like to see that with a player at a loss to know what to try. Yeah. And, uh, as long as she's not giving time, 16. then uh, it's really hard for her to um, to challenge Sina. When she's got a little bit more time, it's much more dangerous. Set over. Eight. 16. Good mm. Risky shot from Simon Awok. The cross court winner went off balance. Your opponent gets to it. 16. Got the full diagonal of the court to scamper. Where they can get there in time. Take a foot off the pedal, uh, Sina. Thank you. I'm good. There's a challenge. Challenge here from Okuhara. Okuhara challenges called out. And that was awfully close.
taking on board a lot of liquid. Yeah, she already finished the first bottle there. Yeah. Oh, that's why. She needed it. So I don't, don't let the that challenge worth taking a look. One challenge remaining. Eighteen ten. Play. Good shot. Excellent make game from uh, Okuhara, though. I really like that uh, cross drop from Simon. Sort of uh, preventing Okuhara from putting even more pressure on her. Fantastic retrieval and then the net game here. First little net exchange we've had so yeah. far, I think. Is it? In my opinion, it's wise that Simon doesn't go into net exchanges with Okuhara because she's simply too good. Exceptions, they, they really uh, take its toll on uh, Sonia Okuhara. You can see, have to stop 19, her movement. 12. Can't tell where the shot from uh, Naval is coming. of effort to reach the shuttle to keep the point going and from Sign and Awell's perspective is all been worthwhile because she has eight game point opportunities from two years ago, 21-12 in 22 minutes. What a start by Maywalk.
The call of 20 seconds remaining and the indication for the players to return to court. She goes through this ritual every time, the bow before she enters the court, having given herself a, a talking Take to. A Very, very noticeable that the Japanese coaches using all of their allotted time. They are concerned about this. For some enable fans, they will be delighted because, quite frankly, that's the best I've seen her play probably since the last World Championships. Yeah. Love all. It is. start by Okuhara and you posed the question in the opening game scene whether Sainanei will could keep the intensity Love. going throughout the entirety of the match yeah and, and, and uh, can she get the correct length on her shot now Okuhara's shots arrive a little bit earlier on her part of the court There's no uh, no question about the um, the game plan. It's there, but um, Four. there's the physicality Love. there to execute it. on the service return we can see Okuhara's body swaying a little bit to one of the sides four celebration either Four. from sign and able she is really up for this yeah Final in the Olympics Play. in Rio last year, how PV Sindhu executed almost the same game plan to perfection. Of course, Sindhu with the uh, long reach and the powerful smashes was a, perhaps an even bigger threat that on that occasion to Okuhara. Six, two. 
Sindhu who plays last match tonight. shot throughout this semi-final so far from Sina Nawal has been incredible. She was really close to that shot of dropping Okuhara there. Good thing it didn't hit her. She's um, conducting the Four. rallies now, Ukuhara. A slice on that, making the shuttle die. Situations that indicate what you've been saying, Jill, that she might be a little bit tired because sometimes she goes, in my opinion, too hard for the lines. We saw it with the smash early on in the right side of the court and this clear as well. That shot works well for her. Nine, it's very good, isn't it? Six. There's no way Okuhara is coming out. Thank if if Sina can hit it there every time, it's a winner every time. Mm. As long as there's some variation with a straight smash once in a while, because she just doesn't have the reach. 
奥原players working so hard. Eight, nine. Oh my goodness, that's good judgment, isn't it? Very important rally for uh, Sana Nidal to win because we saw Ukuhara jumping up and down uh, before Sana was launching her serve. And it's not because she's cold or anything, it's because she tries to loosen up a little bit. So either she's tensed or beginning to feel that um, legs are getting a little bit heavy. I suspect the latter. She really didn't have the power in the legs there to push off. Nine, and it's four. been so well exploited by Sina Nawal. Punch clear, first of all. Okuhara taking the shuffle behind her. Then asking her to move the full diagonal of the court. Just hasn't the power in the legs to get there. And it takes my mind 20 years back to uh, a place not that many kilometers away from here, Scottsdale and Leisure Center, where the World Championship was played back then, where Paul Eric Hoyer, the now president of the BWF, played Sun Jun of China, the later I champion in 99, in the semi final and, and wore him down so that he was unable to win the final against another Dane, Peter Rasmussen. Could that have been the case also here for Okuhara that, Nine. as you said, Jill, that long match last night against Marin has taken just the tip of her sharpness, boom and wise. There again, she plays it really, really sharp. She. She's looking for the points, but by going for the sharpness, she sort of um, oh. gifts the point to Nival. is with Nozomi Okuhara.
That's good play from Okuhara. 13. Pushing very well deep into the forehand corner, then bringing her into the net, and then two deep into the backhand corner. Yeah, she's got to have control and she's got to have patience. Perfect smash. There's signs that these 14. little deceptions on the service returns from Okuhara is starting to bite on um, on sign up. medal in London in 2012 became only the second female athlete ever to win yeah. an Olympic medal. I know I'm getting ahead of myself here, but should it become an all Indian final, then Mayweather McGregor will be the second most important match in this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> stages of that rally, contorting their backs as to play round the headshots as we call them. Final error, having worked so hard in the rally. Just one point in 14, it now. 15. experience to let that drop because for a long long time it looks good Play.
play. <laughs> Both players are just standing there. <laughs> Taking a little breather. Oh, that's good judgment. Service error from Okuhara, and that could be very costly indeed. The flick serve. This is tremendous yeah. badminton. Oh, is that the third bottle of liquid that she's gulped down? Thank you. over 45 minutes into the match and these rallies have been grueling. They're both so good at outmanoeuvring and making opponents go to all four corners of the court that the physicality of this is a real challenge to both of them. And they're sort of pushing the uh, shots to the limit because they know that they have to be in control, otherwise they're in trouble. 17, 16. Both of these two Fight. players. concern right now is, is winning this match oh. at all but if she can win it in two that would give her a better chance in tomorrow's final got approximately uh, seven hours more rest than her opponent oh, well taken. the same goes of course for Okuhara yeah. but uh, she's gonna play at least another game before that, that becomes relevant 18 17 Okuhara. One felt was always going to win by that slice straight smash. Well, it wasn't really a smash, it was a fast drop, really, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Superb. It was the hardest shot she could make in that situation, but also very efficient one. Two points away from taking this second game. close 20, and point, Vimal 17. Kumar says just keep calm game point opportunities for Nozomi Okuhara to level this semi-final at one game right. apiece One game more 
what fighting spirit, what wonderful badminton from both these players. 21-17 confirms the umpire just shy of 50 minutes into the match and we will be treated to a third and deciding game. シンプルにこうそんな複雑に考えたら一回引いたりとかしたらそこタイミング注文も狂ってしまうからシンプルにワンタッチで今やったら枝まで勝負していく頑張れ頑張れ頑張れ頑張れ頑張れ頑張れ
good lift. Disappointment. I think that's the longest of the match so far. on the top and then decided to bank, fall back down Two, Simon's side. Three. That's amazing, isn't it? Look at that. It was over. Wow, that, that was a mistake. Well, she didn't touch it. But she's not allowed to have the record over the net anyway. stages of this deciding game but I've twice thought once about Okuhara that was a tired looking shot and that last one I thought from Sina that's a tired looking shot I think so too Conducting the rally. Oh, and finishes it off with a superb cross court angled shot that finds the line. Six, three. And this is five straight points for Okuhara. Play. That is perfection. position and then okay, missed right. with what should have been the winning shot look how slow and how far out of position Okuhara was there was a huge gap down her left hand side uh, no wonder there's a puff of the cheeks and a look of disappointment thank you six straight points now to Okuhara who looks revived in yeah. my opinion uh, sometimes we see it after a long long match or a, a mentally draining match the day before it takes a game 
to sort of get going again. We saw it with the um, well, other semi-final is Chen Fei when she's beaten Yamaguchi. Then the next day lost the first set against uh, Rachina Ginton and came back strong. It's mm. going wide. Yeah. Well, this is worrying times for Sina Nawal and all Indian fans. It's now seven straight points for the number seven seed. Nine, three. This is going a lot more for the uh, winning shots. Sanandwal or the shots that can give her a big advantage, but right now they're staying on her side. Boy, what a fantastic shot. And now it is most definitely Sina Nawal who's struggling physically. No spring in the legs at all to change direction. In fact, she was body weight was going backwards in court. Well, she stops the run of points. And she needs to try and close down the gap before the change of ends if she wants to win this semi-final. Just over the hour mark now in this semi final. And it is Nozomi Okuhara who has the advantage at the change of ends here in this deciding game it's a seven point advantage for the number seven seed It's always a question in a match like this, which is so physically testing. Regardless of what the coach says tactically, it's a question of whether the player has the physical energy to implement it.
Hulk O'Hara at a standstill. It was Hulk O'Hara who conducted the rally in the early stages, dictated the pace. And then suddenly a smash came Four. from Sinan Awal. And the physical effort of both these players Play. is just extraordinary. 39 shots, the longest rally of the match so far. Judge. Oh. Oh. Yeah. After misjudgment on the previous rally from Nozomi Okuhara to leave that one, let Five. it drop long. Difficult right now. It is. Oh, well, it'd be so nice to sort of get the victory over Marin to pay dividends and take advantage of the opportunity to reach that final. Look at that. Just guides it across court. because she had moved Sine and Awal the full diagonal of the court 15, and moved her twice, seven. making her run the longest distance there. Forehand, deep corner, then backhand net, and then that little hold and flick played to perfection. It's a torn order. For Sine and Ewell to battle back from this sort of deficit. But if anybody can do it, she can. The fighting qualities throughout this match so far from Nozomi Okuhara. Seven. You simply have to admire it. It's fantastic, and we, we knew that she was in good shape. She uh, 
She won the Australian Open, the last Super Series Beauty. before the I World know. Championships. And, and she's continued that. Sina, I'm, I'm about to reach for the pen to to write her off, but what a tournament she's played, and she mm. can definitely be proud of her performance here. And um, I still think she's on the way back. I think. Uh, probably Sir. misses a couple of tournaments where she uh, makes it far in in, in the Super Series uh, tournaments and um, even more practice after that um, knee injury, knee surgery. That's in. Challenge. There's a challenge here from Nozomi Okuhara. Nozomi Okuhara challenges called in. Say, since the line judge got it right. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. Service over. Eight, 18. Play. Nine, 18. Kuhara, two tantalizing points from creating history. 19, history nine. Uh, would be the first ever finalist from her country in the women's singles final at the World Championships. Two previous bronze medals for Japanese players. She's on the verge of her first final. Nozomi Okuhara on match point opportunities. Oh, that's brilliant. He's found the line, my goodness. There's over. 10. 20. landed in and Nozomi Okuhara will be the first ever player from Japan to contest the World Championship Women's Singles Final. She did it the hard way. Thank you, she shouts to the fans here in Glasgow. Red won by Nozomi Okuhara. 21-10 in the deciding game. 21 An hour and 13 minutes of fascinating, wonderful badminton. Their confirmation, 12-21, 21-17, 21-10 in the deciding game. And the Olympic bronze medalist here in Glasgow will contest the World Championship final tomorrow. Now, delights for Nozomi Okuhara. Spare a thought for Saina Nawal, who's battled back from injury and gave it her all today. She is always such a fighter. 
both players playing so well throughout. Oh my goodness me, what a, a morning and afternoon we've had here on semi-finals day. It all started with a huge upset, I suppose, really, when Chen Long, the two-time defending champion and, of course, the Olympic gold medalist, was quite frankly uh, outclassed by the Olympic bronze medalist Victor Axelsson, two straight games. And the Olympic gold medalist Tontoi Akhmad and Liliana Nasir uh, threw against Li and Chao from Hong Kong. Of course, Liliana Nasir will contest a fifth world championship final tomorrow. Mohamed Hassan is the only defending champion left in the tournament. Uh, he's this year playing with Rian Nagun Saputra. Uh, they beat Komora and Sonoda in two straight games. The Olympic champions in the women's doubles, well, they looked to be cruising in the opening game. They were 15-10 up, but lost it in the end, and they've lost it to the former world junior champions, Chen Xing Cheng and Jia Yi Fun. 55 minutes for that two-game victory. And as we've just seen in the women's singles, a fabulous match lasting an hour and 13 minutes with Nozomi Okuhara, the Olympic bronze medalist from Rio, beating the Olympic bronze medalist from London in three fascinating games. Well, of course, there are five more semi-finals to come. They start at five o'clock local time, which is 1600 GMT. And we start this evening session with the world number one, Son Wan Ho, against the five-time former champion, Lin Dan. Then we have women's doubles and Fukushima and Hirota, winners of the Malaysian Super Series earlier this year. They take on the Olympic silver medalist, trying to reach their second consecutive world championship final. That's Yule and Pedersen. Then it's mixed doubles and home interest here for Chris and Gabby Adcock, the European champions. But they're up against the current world number ones, Cheng Shi Wei and Cheng Ching Cheng. Cheng Ching Cheng, of course, is already through to the women's doubles final. Then we have men's doubles, an all Chinese affair, Chai Biao and Hong Wei against Liu Cheng and Zhang Nan. And then it's women's singles, the world junior champion, the reigning world junior champion, Chen Ufei against Pusala Venkata Sindhu. Steam, what a morning it's been. And I'm sure, probably from your point of view, Victor Axelson was the highlight. It was indeed the highlight, a, a shocking surprise almost uh, with the, with the uh, big win there. But uh, very, very uh, exciting matches and more to come tonight. Yes, there certainly is. That is in just a little over two hours' time. We'll be back with the second five semi-finals. In the meantime, from Steve, Steen and myself, Jill Clark. Bye for now.